May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and today is the first day of National Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Joining us today is Dr. Dawn Brown. She is a double board certified psychiatrist who treats children and adults. Dr. Brown, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. It has been an exceptionally difficult last 15 months or so for just about everyone. In addition to COVID-19 pandemic, we're also in a mental health pandemic. Can you break down for us how mental health crises are manifesting themselves in both adults and children? You know, it's interesting because although children and adults share the same type of mental health conditions, the symptoms may appear different. So one example would be depression. Children with depression are more commonly irritable, for example, is a common symptom, whereas in adults, you may see sadness, withdrawn, isolation symptoms. Um, the pandemic, of course, has um, really significantly increased mental health awareness. It's actually uncovered mental health illnesses. We're the disruption of livelihood, right? So kids being out of school, um, people losing their jobs, having to stay inside. We're not designed to hibernate. So just inside their homes and having a disconnect from society, from routines, from everyday living and lifestyle that has caused a lot of problems, not just physically for some individuals, but definitely mentally. And so this has also resulted in the spike that we're seeing in cases for mental health conditions and treatment. So we are all facing that common denominator. You were just speaking about it, COVID-19. For those who are suffering from anxiety, depression, and other mental health conditions, what are the signs that maybe us as loved ones should watch out for? You know, a change in a person's functioning. So a change in behaviors, how they think, how they feel. Sometimes people may actually express these things to you and what's normal for them. You may recognize that because you have to share a degree of intimacy or relationship with that person. So you mentioned it, Aaron. Families are crucial during this time in trying to recognize these signs. Um, a change in sleep, how we eat. Those are two things we must do in order to live. And if someone is eating too much, too little sleep, being too much or too little, those can actually be beginning signs of a person developing a mental health condition. With kids, withdrawing from school, declining grades, not connecting, right? So a lot of these children have been at home and now they're trying to find a different way of connecting in school that's safe, that's you know creating space between their peers that they're not used to. And so that the connection can definitely um, play a role in how they're managing their schoolwork. And it's the same for adults when they're going to their work. We have to find a different way of how to engage there as well. So in general, is a change of functioning is the start and asking and being intentional and asking those questions directly to your loved one. Hey, are you feeling sad? Are you feeling depressed? What's going on with your decline of grades? Why aren't you communicating with your friends? That's very important to ask these direct questions with your loved one so that they can communicate. Oftentimes when someone becomes depressed or feels feel isolated, they may not actually offer these things to their loved one. I want to talk to you for a moment about children in particular. It seems a lot of adults uh, we've seen on social media complaining about protocols that we put into place, but it seems from my vantage point, and I'd like to uh, like for you to look at it, that children are extremely resilient when we're talking about these protocols that, that have affected the mental state of a lot of adults. Have you noticed how resilient the children are, are really soaking in what they're supposed to do, social distancing, using hand sanitizer, and, and putting a mask on? I have, and we actually see this in psychiatry as inanimate justice. Mm. So there is right and wrong, and there's a difference, and children abide by that. That's why it's important for children to have structure, to obey the rules of the classroom, to obey the, whole, the rules of the home, because that's actually what's creating their decision-making. That's how they're actually living day by day. And so when they see these protocols displayed in school or on the TV, they're going to, they're likely to be abide by it and also remind their parents and their family members to abide by it as well. And that de decreases fear, mm. you know? And so we can learn from our kids during this time. It's a great reminder um, for us to see that how their, their resiliency has, you know, played a role in their performance and how productive they are and increasing their grades and also decreasing their fears. It can do the same for adults as well. I can't tell you how many times my little five-year-old says, Daddy, put your mask on. So I agree 100% with what you're saying. Finally, as we wrap up here, doctor, if you are having 
mental health problems or you know someone who has a mental health condition and you noticed it, how would you suggest offering help to this person? And, and, and what's the message that you should give them to seek out that help? I would focus on keeping you, the word you, out of the fray or the, your, your suggestion or your concern. So um, an example would be, I'm concerned about you. I know how you um, generally perform. I know how you act. I know how you communicate. And what bothers me is um, that this is not you know, your norm. And I'm very concerned. And with my concern, I want to, you know, talk to someone to see if we can get help. And I will go with you to do that, whatever it takes. You know, when you actually meet a person where they are in their comfort space, that's where they're likely to listen and adhere to whatever you provide as far as a solution. Especially if it appears scary or the stigma is preventing them from seeking the help that they need and well deserve, you know, that they will likely listen to a loved one and they will actually hear that the, the loved one's concerned about them versus you, you, you is a problem. You're depressed, you're anxious, and that further perpetuates, you know, the actual condition and the symptoms that can result. So I would actually just meet people where they are, make sure that you keep the word you out of it and say, I'm concerned, and then go with them to seek the help um, and to be evaluated to see if they need treatment. Again, May is Mental Health Awareness. Thank you so much for the tips. And Dr. Don Brown, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Aaron.